So I am so excited to have Joey here tonight. Joey is a terrific actor. He has not been on our stage yet. We must rectify that soon. So any casting people out there like Ms. Yvette, please take notes. <laughs> Joey's done a lot of work at Palo Alto Players, which is where I've seen him. And he also hosts the podcast Drunk Broadway, which is very funny and a must listen for all theater folks. Now, I admit that I did, I realized I didn't have a working blender. So <laughs> I didn't actually make one of his drinks, but I made uh, a nice kind of, uh, a very tame virgin drink. It's a fizzy water with lime mixed with blood orange soda with frozen raspberries floating in it and a little pineapple. Yeah. Yummy. And she doesn't want me to mention her, but my mom is also here. She doesn't want to be on camera, but <laughs> she's right over there. So we're both going to be enjoying this. And if you can think of a name for this drink, please do type it into the chat because, hey, there you go. Uh, I'm going to stay here on camera. I'm going to be quiet so Joey can talk. But as always, if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat. Hi, Linda Whipple. And I will be happy to help. And we'll have an audience Q&A afterwards. And uh, Joey's going to explain all the rules to you of the Becky's mom. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to let Joey take it away. Do your thing. Hey. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for that intro. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, welcome to Quiz and Cocktails. Uh, yeah, Drunk Broadway, uh, my silly podcast, is all about Bay Area theater uh, and our opinions on the larger scale theater. Um, but I feed my guests enough cocktails to get them a little honest uh, and maybe just a little bit uh, tipsy. Uh, so that's what we're going to try and do tonight. Uh, but we're going to do it in the form of trivia. So I'm going to share my screen here, and then I am going to go into present mode. We're doing City Lights, Quiz and Cocktails. So here's our agenda. I will walk you through the rules. Um, basically, what points? I'll give you more of that in a moment. Uh, we're going to start off with a before and after round. I would say this is on the easy side. Let's whet your appetite. Uh, we're going to do sports round. Yes, but musical theater sports. Don't worry about it. Uh, characters and shows. I'll name characters. You give me shows. And then badly described shows will be uh, our last time together here. Terrible descriptions of shows that you probably know. We'll see. Okay, here are your rules for the evening. Points don't matter. This is the honor system. I want you to either have a pen and paper or pull up notepad on the side. Write the answers down as you go. You're gonna have a couple of minutes to get that handy if you don't have it already. Sheila's already there. Alana looks like she's about ready. Uh, so yeah, just write them down as you go. And when we get to the answers round, it'll be real clear when we do. We'll open it up. Everyone can come off mic and then we'll fight it out to see who's right. Um, but while we're asking questions, keep it to yourself. Don't shout out the answer. Don't be that person. Just write it down and feel smug in your correctness. Uh, we are not gatekeepers here. If you don't know an answer, don't worry. Knowing an answer doesn't make you a bigger fan. It's just knowledge you don't have, and now you do. And there's a show you can go investigate. Uh, I highly encourage you to drink responsibly. Uh, the more you drink, the funnier I am. So please do enjoy yourself. Hopefully you're all at home. So no one's driving anywhere. So, hey, I'm not your mom. Enjoy yourself. We're going to start off with a cocktail uh, that I have affectionately called Stanford by the Sea. Uh, one of my least favorite, therefore ultimate favorite line in In the Heights is when Nina's coming home, she talks about when she was at Stanford looking out at the sea. It's like, what part of Stanford were you in, woman? Obviously, Lynn had not visited, I think, before uh, he wrote that line. Uh, but it does make for a really good cocktail. So here's what's in it. And here's what it looks like live. Uh, Stanford by the Sea is a gray whale seaside gin which is kind of a new up and coming gin style. It's got an ever so slight salt uh, taste to it. It's delicious. Campari, uh, which is, you know, it's controversial. It's very bitter. It's bright red. It's delicious as long as you know what to do with it. 
a, a whole bunch of blood orange soda on top of that and some simple syrup to even make it a little bit sweeter to fight off the bitterness of the Campari. Put a healthy squeeze of lime in there. It's delicious. So if you don't happen to have those bottles, enjoy what you've got. Crack open that good bottle of whiskey because uh, here we go. Round one, before and after a start around to get our juices flowing, I'll give you the start and end of a title. You give me the missing word. I will show you what I mean by example. The music blank of La Mancha. That one was so easy that you don't even have to write it down. I'll give you the answer. The music man of La Mancha. So you see how that works? There's one missing word right there in the middle. Here we go. Question one, get those pencils, pens, markers ready. They're playing our and dance. So again, keep that answer to yourself, write it down, and we'll get to it when we get to the answers. South Overtures. I don't mean to brag, but I really love this. I've now had quite a few of these and shared them with uh, very lovely friends who I'm thankful I'm finally able to have over in my house. Um, totally my summer drink. She loves and my girl. The full Python spam a lot. I really enjoy how some of these sound like they're just a full show title already. I mean, I would probably go see that. Bunch of snakes and spam a lot. Why not? Move in of this world. I do, I, I hear a waltz. The sound of in the air. All shook in Central Park. The day before awakening. All right, here we go. That was round one. We'll see how easy that was. If you want to, you can uh, come off a mute and we can uh, work this out together. They're playing our what and dance? Song. 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 That sounds like the right answer. Sure enough, it is. South Overtures. Pacific. Pacific, indeed. She loves and my girl. Me. Me. Boy, a bunch of self-centered people in this call. Okay, I see it. <laughs> she loves me and my girl. The full... Monty. Monty. Yeah, Monty, Monty, Monty. Move in of this world. Out. Out. Moving out. Out. Up. Out. 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 Okay. Oh. Yay. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, moving out Billy Joel dance show. Yeah. Oh. I do. I, I hear a waltz. I do. 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 I do. I do hear a waltz. <laughs> the sound of music. Music. If we didn't get that one, you might be in the wrong call. But again, we're not gatekeepers. <laughs> it's possible you didn't know that. <laughs> and all shook. Up. 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 Up in Central Park. The day before awakening. Spring. Spring. Yeah. Uh -huh. It sounds really like a scary show the day before. <laughs> yeah, it really does. The next Netflix horror movie. I would I would watch it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, we're on to recipe number two already. 
because that's round two. It's Thursday, and maybe you want a double fist. Again, I don't judge. So we're keeping within the heights. Uh, they talk about drinking piña coladas. Um, but, you know, maybe we don't drink. I always say you don't have to be drunk to be on Drunk Broadway. You can be drunk on theater itself. Uh, so my version of a piña colada is real straightforward. You need one and a half ounces of Coco Lopez. It really can't just be coconut milk. It should be Coco Lopez. It's sweet. It's delicious. It's good. One and a half ounces of pineapple juice and one ring of fresh pineapple into your blender. That helps it froth up. It gives it a whole different texture. I swear it's lovely. Uh, in fact, I think mine is being made now if she wants to hit the blender. Sound effects? This is why we have tech rehearsal. Hey, there we go. Thank you. All right. Ah. Ah, and it keeps going. So once we've got it all blended, we garnish with a ring of fresh pineapple, three bright cherries, and don't use the nice Luxardo cherries that you might have. Go get those cartoon ones they put on ice cream. It has to be that bright red and you must have a cute umbrella. Otherwise it is not a pina colada. Uh, now, for those of us who do enjoy a little bit of the uh, adult variety, if you want to put rum in there, that's what it's there for. Uh, I recommend uh, a nice lightly aged rum, like a five-year, uh, nice and easy to get, not too expensive, goes wonderfully with the coconut. Okay, but enough of the drinking. Let's do sports. Uh, I know you didn't expect a sports round. Um, this is a little bit harder. I'm not gonna lie. In fact, if you are a fan of the show, some of these questions might sound familiar. I won't call him out by name, but a certain managing director of a theater got none of these answers when I gave him this round. So put your thinking cap on. And if we have to, we can do it by group. What show has the song, You Gotta Have Heart? That's not the hard part yet. Easy. <laughs> what show has the song T-E-A-N? I'll let you noodle on that one for a hot second. Do we lose points for leaving things blank or should we guess? <laughs> <laughs> points don't matter, so give it a guess. <laughs> In fact, I don't know what you wrote down. If you write down four answers and one of them's right, you get full points. <laughs> the national pastime, I will give you a slight hint. Uh, this one is a little more famous for being on a TV show than the stage. That might be too big of a hint, but there you go. The national pastime on the TV. What a game. That's a song. That's a song from a really good show. It's not the song that you think of when you think of this show. You don't know what to think of. The baseball game. Yes, I don't know why. Like sports and musical theater. Look, we're not best friends already. We all know this. Oh, look at this. I've got a fresh delivery. Thank you, Miss Drunk Broadway. Service here is wonderful. Oh, it's good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the baseball game. Uh, yeah, uh, we don't really generally get along with the sports. It's fine if you love both. But for some reason, baseball comes up more than just about anything. Okay, who starred as the titular character Rocky? In Rocky the Musical, original Broadway cast. I don't think there's been another cast, so I don't know why I clarified. Now, the cool thing about Rocky, if you've not seen, um, well, if you weren't one of the very few to see it live or seen the photos, the cool thing that they did is the first few rows of the audience at intermission would get up, those seats go away, the boxing ring becomes a thrust stage and all those people now sit on stage to watch the boxing 
in the round or the, the square. Very cool tech. Oh, other weird thing about this show that I appreciate, they do a movie montage on stage. So they have like 12 people dressed up as Rocky and they spotlight to spotlight to spotlight to show him getting bigger and better and stronger. It's like, oh, that's pretty witty. I like it. This Estrada Jones features which sport? Show not done terribly often. Lisa Strata Jones features which sport? It's not baseball this time. There's your hint. Bring It On features music and arrangements by which two, two people who went on to create Hamilton. Bring It On, of course, the um, movie that we probably all know, uh, was indeed a musical with a bunch of cheerleaders. Um, so imagine not just being a triple threat, but now I have to be thrown 50 feet in the air and be caught. Can you imagine the insurance that stage had to pull out for that show alone? Like it's already impossible to do kind of anywhere else because how are you going to cast it? But uh, oh my God, what a, what a nightmare. What movie adaptation turned musical features young women playing the world's most popular sport? Yup, movie adaptations all the rage. Uh, this turned into a musical featuring young women playing the world's most popular sport. Okay, here we go. Sports answers, we can come off mute. We can do it as a group if we need to. I saw some, uh, some writing down there. So I think we've probably got someone who knows at least this one. You gotta have heart. Damn Yankees. Damn Yankees. There you go. The uh, fun note about Damn Yankees is uh, I was in a production 120 years ago and I was ensemble man number four and our producer, uh, awesome lady, had a friend at the Fresno Bee, because yeah, this was Roger Rocca's dinner theater. Um, and she said, hey, I got a kid in the show whose dad used to be a Yankee. Why don't we do a tiny little blurb in the Fresno Bee and that'll be a cute way to advertise the show. So they send a photog out for the show and this guy takes me out to Chili's for chips and salsa. And he's got this whole story already written, how me and my dad don't get along, we're fighting the whole time, and I do theater and he does sports. And you know, the truth is nowhere near that salacious. So there's this fluff piece about, yeah, my dad's kind of nice and my dad was in the Yankees and now I'm in a Yankee show. And they put a giant photo of my mug in the arts and entertainment section for playing ensemble guy number four. I don't think I had a single solo line. So you can imagine that didn't actually go well with the cast. <laughs> the producer loved it. The cast, not so much. You're right. It's Dame Yankees. Uh, team. Yeah, that's a hard one, huh? I even have already played this and I don't know the answer. <laughs> uh, I saw this question. <laughs> what if I said good grief? Oh, Charlie oh, Brown. Charlie Brown, yeah. There you go. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. The national pastime. Bombshell or smash, or I don't know which is which is the answer you're looking for. Yeah, double bonus points. Alana's totally right. Yeah. That's my favorite person in the world, Megan Hilty. Except for you, wife. You're on the call. Sorry. I was going to say second. You're right thing. here. Very rude of me. Uh, the and national I pastime. A cocktail. <laughs> yes, and I love it. Thank you. I'll pay for that. <laughs> what a game! Ragtime. Yeah, little oh, father okay. son bonding time. Father goes out to the ball game and is talking about you know how civilized baseball is, and the whole thing is just people yelling and cursing and being rather racist and having the time of their lives and. Uh, yeah, son loves it. The baseball game, not to be confused with the last one. Falsettos. 
Ooh, okay. I see you, lady. Yeah, totally right. Falsettos. Now, who starred as the titular character Rocky? Anybody? He is, uh, his partner's name is Ortha. Andy Carl. There you go. Miss Andy Carl. Mr. Andy Carl, uh, who also did uh, Groundhog Day and uh, lots and lots of other things. Legally Blonde. Yeah, that's right. Legally Blonde. This Estrada Jones features which sport? Not baseball. We determined that. I know. I know. Oh, yeah. Do you? <laughs> Miss Lady, who's played this already? <laughs> Anyone else? I guess, I guess basketball. Oh, that's an awfully good guess. Oh. Yes. Well done. Well done. Well done. Hey, Anne. <laughs> All right. Bring it on. Features music and arrangements by which two people who went on to make a show slightly more popular called Hamilton. I'll give you the obvious one, huh? Lynn, 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 there we go. Lynn. And is it Alex Lackamore? Ooh, is that the guy? you are on a roll. Yes, it is. Ooh. Alex Lackamore. Who, uh, I've unfortunately been spelling his last name wrong, like since he became famous. I never put that I in there. And I had to triple check. It's like Lackamore, though. That's how we say it, right? That's how he says it. That I, it's invisible to me. All right, what movie adaptation turned musical features young women playing the world's most popular sport? I've never heard of it, but is it Bend It Like Beckham? That was my guess too. Oh man, oh. Anne is a sports fanatic. Yes. <laughs> yes, I got no. one right. No, I have a soccer fiend husband. Ah. Ah. <laughs> so I know it's the most popular sport and that's the only movie that I know that could be turned into a musical. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. A League of Their Own could totally work, by the way. You could absolutely do that. I could see that. More roles for women on stage. Yes, please. I would totally see that musical. Absolutely. They are I think you need to write that, Joey. Mm. Someone better than me should write that, but thank you. <laughs> All right. It's a drink and bio break. Uh, I will leave you with uh, the ever so effervescent and joyful Patty Lapone, who looks like she could murder uh, the audience and everyone else on stage in this wonderful shot. Uh, but yeah, let's take five. It's 826. Um, so there's your five. We'll go back at 831. Until then, please feel free to come off mute. We can chat it out and give people a minute to, uh, to rest their brains. It's so arduous. I mean, I really need that break. Mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just an excuse so I can drink more. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, how are we all doing? Is this good? Is this hard? Is this easy? It's fun, but I, I, the sports were hard. Yeah. The sports were hard. They totally were. And I think the wolves, the play of the wolves would not make a good musical and um, was not a movie. So could not be the last one. <laughs> oh, good one. Yeah, I could have put the wolves in here. What other sports Next musicals time. are there that I missed? There's not a lot of them. No. So Rudy is not a musical. <laughs> no. no. I mean, there's the PE sequence in Hairspray. Yeah. But it's not really a sports musical. Yeah. Legally Blonde has the whole whipped into shape. That's sporty. Starlight Express. <laughs> Starlight Express. Sure. Trains on skates. That's acrobatic. Ilana in Merrily We Roll Along, when Frank and Charlie pretend they're the Kennedy brothers, they play football for a minute. Hmm. There's a moment there of football. <laughs> That's fun. There's got to be more. There's got to be more. But there's obvious reasons why this is a terrible idea in general. Was the Chariots of Fire River a musical? No. No? <laughs> Though I can see the strobe light of them slowly running across the stage <laughs> yeah, now. Exactly. Where you can catch every other frame. <laughs> I would go see that. 
Yeah, I mean, right. It's mostly a, just a period drama. A bunch of people sitting around saying cool things. That could How work. about uh, My Fair Lady? It's got horse racing. Sure. Totally. The tennis match in um, City of Angels. Oh, yeah. I like the idea that the people on stage are the ones watching. So it's like, we don't have to stage the sport. I mean, <laughs> heaven forbid. We'll all just watch it. <laughs> So this is from, um, you know, I was actually about to tell something that I'm not sure is true. You can help me out. Is this from the most recent production or the last time she did it? Because I was about to say, I think this is from the London production before they brought it over um, to uh, be on Broadway, the most recent one. Hmm. I saw her on Broadway in... Uh... Back in the, about 1979, well, just right after it opened. Oh, wow. Awesome. Is this company or yeah. what is this? I yeah, yeah. This is okay. Patty playing Joanne and company. Yeah, my daughter's going to school on Staten Island and she told me that this is coming back. And so um, when she goes back for her second semester, that's our opportunity. Nice. <laughs> that is not the hairstyle or the wig, wig or hairstyle, whatever it was that she wore for the um... oh did we freeze somebody froze yeah uh, you froze for a no, second I... Lana. say again um that is not the either oh i'm still unstable i don't know if you can hear me or not that yeah. is not the wig or hairstyle that she wore for the uh, neil patrick harris filmed one that was done a number of years ago so i'm yeah that is mm. um either yeah one. i think that is the new one uh, my light just died. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. I'll give myself a little bit more light. Here. And that's, um, of course, the character drinking the vodka stinger, which we recently looked it up to see what a vodka stinger was. And it sounds disgusting. They're <laughs> vile. This is from an age of terrible cocktails. Is it mouthwash? Yes. Mm. It's vodka and cream de menthe. Ooh, that's Ew. it. That sounds it's terrible. Just minty, chalky vodka. Mm. No, thank you. What we're having is much better. Okay, eight thirty-one. That was our five. <laughs> Let's move on to round three. Uh, we're making good time here. Characters and shows. I'll give you characters. You give me the show. So let's go back on to mute, get those pins ready. And here we go. Albert, Rosie, and Kim are all from what show? Jean Valjean, Marius, and Fantine. Again, not gatekeepers, but this might be considered on the easier side. Roxy, Velma, and Billy are also in a show together. Seymour, Audrey Two, and Oren all share the stage. Mark, Roger, and Angel. Seeing some pretty quick writing down here. Fred, Lily, and Bill. Ah, not quite so fast on that one. Okay, okay. Elphaba, Glinda, and Nessa Rose. Cornelius, Horace, and Barnaby.
Frankie, Tommy, and Nick. Sandy, Danny, and Betty? Mm-hmm. Saw a couple eyebrows on that last name. Bobby, Hope, and Mr. Cladwell. John, Benjamin, and Thomas. One of those names means it's not the other show that it could be. <laughs> Mrs. Lovett, Anthony, and Tobias. This reminds me I'm a little hungry. Time for food after this. Christine, Raul, and Carlotta. Tevia, Golda, and Model. I will admit that I nearly just pointed to myself instead of saying Tevia. I'm ready, people. I'm ready. It's time. I've done that show four times. I've got one more in me. I'm proving that I can do the beard. Come on, let's talk. I know it's tired, but it's still so good. Here we go. Answers off of mute. I think people did pretty well on this based on what I saw. <laughs> Albert, Rosie, and Kim. Bye, bye, birdie. Bye, bye, birdie. Yeah. Mm. That one's pretty good because there's multiple songs that just name the characters directly. Here we go. Very difficult. Very complicated. I'll give you lots of hints. Lame is. Lame is. What? Okay. <laughs> yep. Well done. Well done. Roxy Velman, Billy. Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. I'll always hold that show near and dear to my heart. Um, I was in a production uh, directed by Janie Scott, uh, music directed mm -hmm. by Katie Coleman, and <laughs> they put the jazz band on stage. And they gave me a spotlight and a hot jazz band. And they said, sing a song. And it, what a gift that was. I was, um, of course, Roxy. And I was, I was good. Uh, no, no, I, I sing Mr. Cellophane. Um, and uh, I, will, I will always remember that moment. I'm very grateful for it. Because that was Chicago. Uh, Seymour, Audrey too, and Oren. Little shop. Yeah, there we go. Feed me, little shop of horrors. Mark, Roger, and Angel. Rent. Rent. Mm. A follow up to L. A. Boheme. I believe that's pronounced. <laughs> Fred, Lily, and Bill. Ooh. Okay. Let's add some other names. Um, Tom, Dick, and Harry. Uh -huh. Kiss me, Kate. There we go. Yeah, Barbara got it. Kiss me. Huh. Huh. Alphaba, Glenda, and Nessa Rose. Wicked. 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 And I'm going to make a commitment here. Um, the rumors have been that Ariana Grande is going to be cast in this movie. And if she does, I will do a one-man show of the Full Monty for free for anyone who wants to see it. I think it's such a terrible idea for me to do that. <laughs> and I think it's such a terrible idea for her to be cast in this that I, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip tables. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just not a fan. She can't sing it, she can't sing it. There are moments when she does get out of her nose where you're like, oh, she does know how to sing, right? Like oh, she knows exactly what she's doing. It's just, she has no consonants left to tell me what she's doing. 
like if you listen to her on that 13 soundtrack or cast recording yeah like, when she was first starting you're yeah. like this girl can sing and sing. pop music got a hold of her yeah I also acknowledge that I must be crazy because all sorts of brilliant Broadway people absolutely love her. And I bet she's a lovely person. Jason Robert Brown, Kristen Chenoweth, these very talented people think she is the end all be all, but you heard it here. No, thank you. Cornelius, Horace and Barnaby are. Wonderful Hello, life. Name. No. no, hello, Dolly. Hello, Dolly. Hello, Dolly. I mean, hello, Dolly. Oh, Dolly. shit. Yes. Yeah. Yes, totally right. Frankie, Tommy, and Nick. Jersey boys. Yeah. Mm. Sandy, Danny, and Betty. Grace. Grace. Who's Betty? Rizzo. 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 Yeah, Rizzo. it's Riz. <laughs> Tell me about my first name. What is it? Bobby, Hope, and Mr. Cladwell. I know a couple people know this. We're in town. Yeah, there we go. Never saw it. A hilarious, wonderful show with a title that's slightly off putting for some. It's so witty. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, it is a love letter to musical theater in a very self referential way that I'm hugely on board for. I like musicals that know that they are musicals and boy does it. Unapologetic, you're in town. John, Benjamin and Thomas. 1776. Yeah, there we go. That's the number I'm looking for. Mrs. Lovett, Anthony and Tobias. Sweeney Todd. Uh -huh. I have many favorite song times, but when it comes down to it, I think it's this. I think it's this. Mm -hmm. Ilana was in a great production uh, with Hill Barn with uh, Miss Heather Orth and, and um, Pinto. yes, Keith Pinto, that I thought was absolutely fantastic. Christine, Raul, and Carlotta. Phantom. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Dropping chandeliers, Phantom of the Opera. Uh, if you haven't seen the sequel, good for you. <laughs> Tevia, Golda, and Mottle. Fiddler. Yeah, of course. As if the beard jokes didn't give it away. Fiddler, we love it. All right. Uh, we are already at 8.40 on to our last round. Uh, if you need a quick bio break, go for it. If you need to refill the whiskey, go for it. Uh, I'll give you uh, a three minute break this time. It's 841. We'll come back at 844 and we'll do our last round. Two, three. While we're on break, I just wanted to let you guys know, I am about to add it to the website. I haven't yet, but next week, Thursday, we're going to be visiting with the folks from the Pear Theater. And hey. artistic director, Sinjin Jones is going to be there and some playwright director type folks who are involved with their next couple of shows, the one that they have running right now, The Late Wedding, and the next one, Mothers of the Bride. And so I think it's gonna be a lot of fun talking to them about how they're making the shows, opening during this time period. And it's kind of cool because for The Late Wedding, you can choose to either see it live and indoor, live and outdoor, or streamed, just depending on the night. So I think that's really interesting. So it'll be fun to talk to the pair. So that's next week, right back here. Nice. Yeah, I absolutely adore um, the inclusive nature and the accessible nature of theater that was proven to be possible um, over this last year. You know, there's one million challenges and I'm not going to get into it. But for whatever reason, there's a lot of people that can't leave the house right now. Or there's people in, you know, Peoria. <laughs> there's people in Topeka who don't have a theater scene. Uh, what if they had the chance to see that show for the first time ever and got inspired? I love that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, a quick shout out to Tabard, who's doing a, a good version of that as well. They've got yeah, like yeah. seven cameras set up for one of their last shows. And it was it was a joy to watch online. And we should give a shout out to Palo Alto Players who's having their big fundraiser this weekend. 
Oh, that's right. That's Sunday. Yeah, 90 years. Happy birthday. 90 years continuously running. That's that's incredible. What an accomplishment. Okay. Are we all set? Are we all ready? Badly described shows, terrible descriptions of shows that you know. Uh, let's go on mute again, and we'll finish strong. I keep right-clicking. Here we go. Wolverine runs off to join the circus. There's also a secret theme to this round. If you get the secret theme, good for you. Lip syncers are caught up in their web of lies. Lip syncers are caught up in their web of lies. Dancing prostitute becomes the center of everybody's story and then dies. Poor dancing prostitute. A pedantic and misogynistic asshole treats everyone terribly and still wins in the end. If you were thinking to yourself right now, self, that describes a few shows, you're not wrong. So give me your answers, bring them. That might not be the one I'm looking for, but you might be right. Thirsty New York City social worker is kept down by the greedy one percenter. Speaking of thirsty. Double O seven sings while figuring out a complicated paternity issue. Creepy hermit doles out his own brand of justice against those he deems ungrateful and unworthy. Creepy hermit doles out his own brand of justice against those he deems ungrateful and unworthy. A woman's guide on how to sleep your way to the top and get rich on other people's money. Lots of white men singing about lady winds. Now the lots of white men singing, that's, that's most shows, you, you'd be forgiven for thinking that, but lady winds, what, what does that mean? Okay, here we are. We're already to the answers of the final round. Let's come off mute and see how we do. Wolverine runs off to join the circus. Barnum, great, greatest, showman, greatest on earth. showman. These are good options. Yeah, the greatest showman. Close. I'd say greatest show on earth, which wasn't quite right. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Lip sinkers are cut up in their web of lies. Uh, okay. Uh, Alter boys. <laughs> oh, that's a fun one. <laughs> no, maybe they do sing their own, though I like that answer. Any Millie Vanilli song? <laughs> yes, Millie Vanilli, the Broadway show. It was very good. Kiss of the Spider Woman. Okay, okay. These are all very wrong. <laughs> what if I were to say that I was being um, quite happy and frivolous in the in the precipitation? I was singing in the rain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Singing in the rain. What? Yeah. Really? She's the lip syncer and she gets caught because it's oh, not her singing. God. The main blonde lady. Yeah. Ah. 
a uh, dancing prostitute becomes the center of everyone's story and then dies. Is Saigon? Moulin Rouge? Would be. Oh. <laughs> I was going for Moulin Rouge. Oh. Yeah, there we go. That makes more sense. <laughs> Actually, I think Miss Saigon is a pretty good answer. Yeah, yeah, take your point. I agree. <laughs> Pedantic, misogynistic dude treats everyone terribly and still wins. Music man? My fair lady. Ooh, I told you there's more than one answer. <laughs> yeah, my fair lady. That's my fair great. lady. Five. All right, that's what people think. And they're right. Yeah, my fair lady is what I had in mind. There's many of them, but he might be among the worst. He's definitely the most pedantic. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, it is his job. So that part is maybe a little forgivable. Thirsty New York City social worker kept down by the greedy one percenter. I put guys and dolls. That's kind of a reach. Okay. Okay. Because she gets strong. Sure, it's true. For the first time ever, she goes down to Cuba. She has some beautiful coconut lovely drinks. It's a leche. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Not the one I was thinking. Um, there have been multiple productions of this. Um, there's uh, a quick spotlight of a U.S. president in this story. There's a key. Oh, Annie. 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 There you go. Annie. Annie. Ah, <laughs> ah. Talking about Miss Hannigan, who gets quite thirsty by being, you know, drunk all the time. Um, and our one oh, percenter, oh. of course, is our our hero in this piece. Uh, the lovely bald man himself. Daddy. I missed that one. Devil 07 sings. Mamma Mia. Yeah, Mama. Uh. Uh, 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 trick, a trick question to... trick a trick <laughs> it was 007 in a different movie it's true well so was wolverine <laughs> yeah. that's right <laughs> it, take, it, it absolutely gives me no pleasure to make fun of this man i love pierce brosnan he seems like a wonderful human being and he also seemed like he was having the time of his life he was great in that icelandic saga thing what was that called Oh, I don't know that one. Oh, it's got uh, Will Ferrell in it. It's a recent movie. It's hilarious. Oh, is that Eurovision? Mm -hmm. Eurovision. That's it. Oh, I didn't watch I that, to but see I've that. Seen Do you that. like it? Yeah. It's hilarious. It was very good. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I'll, I'll put that on the list. Yeah, totally right. Creepy Hermit doles out his own brand of justice against those he deems ungrateful and unworthy. Of Eden, the Tempest. <laughs> okay, okay. And little... mm? Grinch. Grinch. I don't know. Ooh, Grinch is a really good one. You <laughs> take points for that. Not what I'm going for. Uh, imagine if uh, all the people he is taking it out on are children. Willy Wonka. And Oliver. 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 There you go. I heard Willy Wonka. <laughs> yep. Oh, that. Willy Wonka. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Good. Now, you probably <laughs> don't care about my opinion of this show, but I wanted to love it so much. I love Shaman and Whitman, and Christian Borel was Willie, and I don't care for that cast recording at all. I hope that it was visually stunning, you know, especially based on what I heard their budgets were, but that cast recording is not my fave. It's too bad. It can't always be for me. Hard lesson, but true. A woman's guide on how to sleep your way to the top and get rich on other people's money. Dirty rotten scoundrels. Uh, I love that. No, that's not it. <laughs> but it totally is now. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Gentlemen prefer blondes. Okay. Yeah, could be, could be. Mm -hmm. It's America. a little further south than that. Avita? There we go. <laughs> Absolutely right. Ah, I needed that I south know. clue. Patty LaPone again. 
We are all workers now. Lots of white men singing about lady winds. They said paint your wagon. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't believe you got that. <laughs> that's, that's, that was my hard one. That's my generation. <laughs> we got it. Yay. 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 Oh Yay. 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 Okay. <laughs> Took us a little while. Yeah. There you go. Talk about Yay. shows that didn't age I got terribly it. well. Yeah. Ooh. You call the win Mariah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, right. You call yeah. the win Mariah. Right. 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 Yeah. right. That, that show actually had some really great songs in it. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you take them out of the show, I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> now, I heard they did do a revamp version where they got the rights to actually rewrite the entire book, um, but it didn't play for very long or go very far. Um, but there is a revamped version of that, um, though I hear that you cannot get the rights to that version. So anybody that is wanting to do this show and they really really shouldn't <laughs> um you have to do the original that's what i heard ladies and gentlemen thank you so much i thank you for coming to quiz and cocktails uh for being open to my silliness and talking about sports for longer than you might have wanted to <laughs> uh you can find drunk broadway uh kind of everywhere um drunkbroadway.com will lead you to everywhere but on Insta and Facebook and kind of wherever you listen to podcasts, Google, Apple, uh, Spotify, what have you. Um, now, we were on a very long break because I'm a big believer that Drunk Broadway had to happen in person. The original idea was that little fun drunk conversation that happened at a cast party. I wanted to record that and share that with everybody so we could all have that cast party atmosphere. So we put it on pause, but I had some lost episodes that we recently posted for a bunch of In the Heights stuff. And I'm getting that same cast back uh, from that show to talk about the differences between the movie and the stage production. Uh, and we're recording that coming Monday. And that'll be the first time we recorded in, I think, 18 months. So I'm very excited. So we're back. And if you wanna hear very, very local opinions about very local theater, that's where we're at with Drunk Broadway. So thanks again, friends. Uh, I really appreciate everybody showing up. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you soon. Yeah, and thank you so much, Becky. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Sure. If anyone has any questions for Joey about Drunk yeah, yeah. Broadway or anybody wants to talk theater a few minutes, we're great. Yeah, let's chat. Joey, that's awesome. You are a pro. I know you just did the same show for Palo Alto or a similar. You did a quiz and cocktails for Palo Alto players. Yeah, a similar show. Anniversary. That's so great. I got to say what I really like about Drunk Broadway is not only are you talking about specific shows, but my favorite was the two-parter where you just swapped stories about things that went wrong. <laughs> it's just like, I didn't know, I knew some of the people on the show. I knew Mike Rohn and, and I, and I, but I didn't know a lot of the stories, but I just enjoyed every minute of it. I just smiled because it was like, I could have been there. I, I know exactly how you all felt. <laughs> I miss live theater so badly just for that reason. Yeah. Right? I mean, uh, you can watch the DVD and it's the same every time. How boring is that? I want to be there the night that the fire alarm goes off and we all have to leave. I want to be there. Really short version of one of my favorites. Um, and this is total schadenfreude. I'm a bad person. You should know. I was going to ask you to tell your favorite. So this person. Um, so I, I've got two, but one of my favorites to witness as an audience member is I was at a production of Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> and at the end of the production... <laughs> They pulled a cross on stage and they couldn't get it locked in to the set. And they're trying and they're trying. And the band is doing a really good job of vamping over and over. And eventually a nice lady in flannel and a headset comes on stage with a wrench and starts trying to wrench it directly to the stage. <laughs> and it's going on forever. And, you know, for the first 30 seconds, you're just, oh, I feel so awful. These wonderful people right. had this whole show. And then, you know, by about the fifth minute, you're just like, no, this is the best thing I've ever seen. And I'm so glad that I'm here. And eventually, Jesus just turns to the nice lady in flannel and shakes his head and just puts his arms out and they hit the final note. It's like, that's it. Thank you for coming. <laughs> oh, I feel oh, so bad, but God, that was funny. It's actually funny when uh, from 
some of your earlier episodes of Drunk Broadway, you would ask people to share some of their like theater moments of like the things that went wrong. Mm -hmm. And it was funny to me how many of those moments I was there for. That they oh, just really? I just happened to have watched the show that day. Um, <laughs> there was a production of Pippin at San Mateo High School where they accidentally dropped the scrim on his head and I was there. Oh, oh no. It was um, uh, the final dress rehearsal of City Angels of City of Angels at Hillbard where their like theater set just like fell down forward. Thankfully didn't hit anyone. Oh, but good. The show had to stop for like 20 minutes while they fixed it before they could mm. do anything else. I was there for that too. <laughs> I was there for for this lovely Jesus Christ superstar story. <laughs> Um, they need to stop going to the theater a lot. <laughs> oh, <my God>. oh <laughs> no! <laughs> and, right, like the first preview of uh, In the Heights at Palo Alto Players, they go to put the grade up, right? For like, I got he, he chases away Graffiti Pete, and he goes to put it up, and it won't come up. And we had to like stop for ten minutes while they Whoa. got the grade to go up, so we could actually mm. have the show keep going. <laughs> I, I just remember at City Lights. Um, when we did noises off, you know, our, we don't have very, we don't have like a traditional theater. So people would stay at intermission to see the set be turned around. And the, one of the nights I was there, the set got stuck on one of the lights. Oh no. And everyone, you just heard the collective gasp <gasps> <laughs> of, of, oh my God, is it going to tear that part of the set off? You know, is it gonna is the light gonna drop yeah it was a it was definitely a whole thing to watch that set being turned around because we don't have a fly space or anything like that so um so what happened yeah, was, um they just kind of everybody stopped all the people that were all the crew that were turning it just stopped and they kind of looked around <laughs> and then they they're like okay let's just bit by bit by bit by bit and there see we if we can get it like let's try another angle and this, and it, they eventually got it to go hmm. around but yeah that was a I just remember it. all of the reports that I got in the in the email were like yeah 90 percent of the audience stayed in the in their seats during intermission to see the oh, flip no. of the set <laughs> <laughs> if you know the show you know that's kind of the best part is yeah like, that's such a fun it's time. an amazing draw of getting to watch that set be turned around right it, because most very few places are going to bother with with what has to happen with the space are able to close their curtain for it so it's always i think even right possibly when i saw it on broadway they even left the curtain open for us to see it move nice oh wow well shout out to set designers and crew for making yes. that such a moment for oh, sure and that's it, like you said, it's one of the joys of live theater. I mean, I always say one of my yeah. favorite parts about live theater is the near misses. When, is when you mm -hmm. see something about to happen on stage and then you see the artists getting through it and getting on with the show. And it's just, it's beautiful. Totally. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, someone drops a, a set piece or not a set piece, but, you know, a tiny little thing on the stage. You're like, who's going to get it? Who's going to get it? Who's yeah. going to be the smart one to pick it up? Are they going to make it natural? Is it going to be awkward? But I think my absolute favorite has to be um, the night the chair broke, but I didn't. Um, Don't tell that one. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> one of my favorite experiences um, of doing this very highfalutin, pretentious musical theater was Young Frankenstein, which is this ridiculous moment of a show. And uh, I had the good fortune to play Igor and I was hamming it up as hard as one could. <laughs> and there's a scene where we're in the laboratory and we have just discovered uh, that I've procured, procured the wrong brain. And I'm supposed to go downstage and sit in a chair and the doctor's supposed to you know, come up and talk to me about it. And it's just this very nice conversation to start. And I go up and I sit on this rickety old chair that we have and my butt goes immediately down to the stage. Like all four uh, of the, you know, the legs just split and I, boom, I hit the stage and I look up, my eyes get real big and the audience roars because they think it's on purpose. Because why not? You have a breakaway chair. That's easy enough. 
And I'm so grateful that it happened when it did, because the very next line is the doctor coming down to say, are you hurt? And the audience <laughs> roars again. And then my very next line is, only my feelings. And the audience roared a third time. And it was just this perfect moment of the chair broke. I didn't. Everyone else did. It's totally okay. It's totally okay. And that show especially. Well, um, that made it funnier because, I mean, your colleagues on stage were trying their hardest to get through the giggles and not quite succeeding, which made all of us in the audience laugh even harder. It's okay. like when you watch Saturday Night Live and the actors break, it's always funnier. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would suck if it were something like Bridges of Madison County or something. <laughs> <laughs> As one of the other actors on stage, those of us that started out fine just couldn't hold it together when everyone else was just done <laughs> and gone and was the only one like not breaking, but like you're watching just everyone else completely fall apart. It it was it was amazing. <laughs> I went to the director that night after curtain call and I said, You must give me a breakaway chair. This is the best part of this show now. <laughs> He wouldn't do it. <laughs> so Aww. that was a one-time thing. Um, you know he's listening, right, Joey? Yeah. All right. You heard me. <laughs> this is the same guy who didn't get the sports questions right. Eh? <laughs> yeah, this show will be shown on YouTube later. So, you know, we can make sure he sees it. <laughs> I got no shame. I told him already. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions for Joey or any of the stories that you want to share before we wrap up? That's okay too. Yeah. Joey, this was awesome. Seriously, I want to get you on the City Light stage. You were fantastic. I would love to. I very much would. Um, it is uh, very much on my to do list to grow and change as a person to be in new venues. Um, yeah, looking forward to season announcements across the board. I'm ready. That's great. Well, we've got our season announced. We haven't announced a lot of audition stuff yet, but it's true. That will be coming, as I said, I think our uh, <laughs> our casting director is here <laughs> too. So <laughs> wink wink. This was so much fun. Oh, I'm yeah. even gonna forgive you for the sports section. <laughs> <laughs> I did terribly on. Mom, you wanna say anything? Nope. No, she doesn't want to say anything. <laughs> but thank you again. Thank you everyone. This was a great time and we look forward to seeing you back at City Lights. We're reopening in September, but um, until then we'll be here on the next stage weekly and uh, then we'll be going monthly later on in the year. Thank you all for being here tonight. It's been great fun. Bye. Thank, Bye. You. thank you all. Bye. Bye.